the Samruddhi Mahamag. Maharashtra's latest crown jewel was recently declared open to the general public for the 520 km Nagpur to Shirdi section. So naturally, we had to test it out to get a feel of how much difference has it made and what better way than a direct comparison with the old road. Well, if you're wondering where we are, behind me is the famous and special zero point or zero milestone in Nagpur that signified the center of India before partition. But what we're going to do today is equally special because finally, after a long wait, the Hindu Rudai Samrat, Bada Sahib Thakre, Maharashtra Samruddhi Mahamag is finally open to the general public from Nagpur to Shirdi. And today, Swamin and I are going to find out exactly how much of a difference that has made. Yes, we are. And what we have here are two identical Audi Q7s. But before that, we have an important decision to make. Who's going to take the older beaten path and who's going to take the newer, smoother highway? I've got a suggestion. Let's do it with a classic coin toss. Sure, I like my odds. Okay, heads is the call and heads it is. So it goes without saying I'm going to take the Samruddhi while Somil is going to take the long way home. I can't believe I suggested that. <laughs> In terms of the road, it was a rather straightforward one for me. Just get out of the city and split away from Sawmill onto the main highway. As for me, I would have to rely on Google and navigate the old road towards Karanja, Jalna, Aurangabad and Gangapur before finally reaching Shirdi, a road that is estimated a 12-hour drive. Boy, was I in for a long drive. The new highway sure has cut down time, but exactly by how much? Alright, so when Somil and I started, it showed roughly 12 hours for him and around 8 hours for me on this Samruddhi road. So that's a saving of a good 3.5 to 4 hours. But that is with Google Maps, which currently does not have the required traffic data to get an accurate estimate. But since I can maintain a speed of 120 km an hour pretty much throughout, and it is only 520 km, the math says I should be in Shirdi comfortably under six hours. So that's more than half. And that is a lot. Plus you also save on fuel because it is a lot more efficient. And the big one, the really most important part is the safety that the Samruddhi Mag offers. Now, the thing is, it's very simple. What we are trying to do basically is it's a test of the road, you know, more than anything else, which is why we've kept the cars constant. They are both Q7s, both the same specs. So that's not going to be too different. But where Sawmill is going to have the challenges is, well, the infrastructure, the challenges we have on our national highways, the big hurdles, animals, people cutting in. And on the contrary, the Samruddhi Marg is an access controlled highway that is absolutely built to international standards and we're going to find out exactly how different it is. While I was just getting started and hadn't even officially begun the Samruddhi Mahamag, Somil had already started with the complaints. I can't believe that I lost to Jay and now he's smooth sailing on the new Samruddhi Expressway and I'm on this old highway. Anyways, in terms of distance, uh, I have to drive just about 50 kilometers more than Jet. But in terms of time, he is going to reach four hours before me. Can you believe it? And even though I'm in this Q7 and it's a really comfortable interstate tourer, I just wish I was there. <laughs> yes, the complaints were quite fair on my part. Thanks to the frustration of Jay getting to relax on the better road, while I had to take the battered ones. All right, well, there we go. There's the first toll, first of only two tolls for me because I'm going to cross one toll at the entry, obviously, in Nagpur and one at the exit when I enter Shirdi. And the first toll comes up now. Fast tag obviously has made things a lot more convenient.
All right, so the toll is left behind, and it is now an official welcome onto the Hindu Rudai Samrat Bara Sahib Thakre Maharashtra Samruddhi Mahamarg, and it is absolutely exciting. Such an important road, you know, for country and state because it's going to connect the two main cities, Nagpur to Mumbai. Better for industrial growth, better for socio-economic growth, and it's just such a boon to have. It is the absolute nerve and the crown jewel of Maharashtra right now. Before Jay starts listing out the lengthy safety list on the new highway, on the old route, you are your biggest safety feature. Staying hyper aware is what you need to do, and dodge every surprise thrown at you. Now these are the roads that really define the Indian highway. Single lane. You're passing through villages in some areas. There are potholes, road works going on. I mean. You name it, and it's there. I mean, look at this guy. He's coming in the wrong direction. Where else would you see this? Well, you have none of that on the new highway, and instead, the road is just pristine. Now, what's great on the Samruddhi Expressway is that it has been designed and developed with international standards in mind. So, obviously, you have all your lanes that are well marked. You have the lay-by lanes that are very good as well. The shoulders are nice and broad. It even has helipad markings in some areas. Where helicopters can land in medical emergencies for airlifting, and that is again an ode to the immense amount of safety it has. All the barricades are very, very strong, very well made, and everything has been engineered with safety in mind. Now at this point, I'm sure Somil is still cribbing about how the road is bad, how it's long, how it's not as fast, and I get it, but. Uh, I think in terms of excitement, he has more because all I'm doing is maybe turning the steering three to four degrees, and that's all I've done for the past hundred, one fifty kilometers. There has been not a single bump on the road, not a single crack in the road. It has been absolutely flawless, and yes, it does get a bit <laughs> one-dimensional after a point. Well, that was the only positive I had on my route. The ability to enjoy driving a bit more. To be fair, not all stretches of road on the old highway are bad. In fact, I've encountered some really nice, really smooth stretches of tarmac, freshly laid out tarmac rather, and I've got a chance to experience what this Q7's petrol engine is all about. And I must say, I'm very impressed. Impressive it was, but not for long. For every smooth and uninterrupted section at high speeds, there would be two villages to get through at terribly low speeds. And low speeds, I have been doing. We've been driving through towns one after the other, and our speeds are under 40 kilometers per hour. On the other hand, Jay Padil, I'm sure he'll be flying right now. Yeah, I gotta keep dreaming, gotta keep going. Yeah, gotta keep pushing, gotta keep breathing. Yeah, gotta keep working. Yeah, this for the moment, I want a million, and I want my mansion, so my family knows that we are set for life. Yeah, ain't nothing that's gonna take over. She know when they're gonna take it, but I grab it. I'm a habit. I'm a cut of my habits. Yes, I was flying compared to him, but not exactly in a cheerful way. Problem is, if you're alone on this road, you are bound to get bored because you have straights that stretch for over 10 kilometers, some over even 12 kilometers, and that does get boring. Once you've exhausted your playlist, once your podcasts are finished, one thing I would like to highlight though is this car because the Q7 has been an absolute champion. I mean, it was made for roads like these. You know, this is no less than an autobahn, long straight highways. Triple digit speeds for long hours. This thing is absolutely in its element. Now stability is superb. The seats are so so good. You have the lovely Bang and Olufsen audio system as well. The cabin is nice and hushed. So yeah, it is a very very comfortable experience. But I take any day over dodging cattle. Now, if you want to take a break from all this, there are obviously rest stops in place. Few stations are currently doubling up as rest stops. Proper food courts and rest stops are being constructed, but thankfully the government did not wait till everything is ready. They opened up the road so that at least people can travel back and forth without having to wait for the entire thing. 
One of the few advantages I have on the old road is plenty of food options. While the Samruddhi will eventually get modern food courts and some iconic dhabas. Honestly, I agree on that. A good food stop, especially when you're hungry, is almost worth taking the long route home, but not today. Today was about having robot like focus on the end destination. And speaking of robots. Now, the Audi does have lane keep assist, but I do wish it had level 2 ADAS because this is a road that is absolutely designed and made for level 2 ADAS. Well marked, well paved, everything is where it's supposed to be. So the car can pretty much drive itself all the way to Shirdi. It is that good. But if you are an enthusiast, well, this road is not going to do much for you. It is more about efficiency and functionality. So if you get your fun car out here, something with really bustling feedback from the steering, it's not going to be much help because it is just long, loping straights. Countless kilometers later, I realized I'm in need of fuel and also an update on how far behind Sawmill was. Well, the one good thing about Samruddhi Expressway is that the fuel pumps are all company owned, which means you have that assurance of clean, pure fuel. More often than not, what happens on long road trips is that you end up filling in odd fuel stations and that usually destroys your engine. Not on here though, because you have that guarantee and you have pumps that are clean and pure. Well, while we've taken that fuel break, let's quickly check on Sawmill, find out where he's reached. He's definitely behind me, but uh, never hurts to rub it in. So thankfully it's ringing because you have network throughout the Samruddhi Mahamag. I've never actually had a point where the network has dropped. So that's one big advantage. Hello? Sawmill, hi. Where are you? We've just stopped for lunch. Well, I have covered more than half the distance that I had to, so Shirdi is not looking too far at all. And of course, it's been smooth sailing. You sound really battered. How's the road? Oh, the roads don't ask. So we've been dodging all sorts of things on the road. There are bikers, there are truckers, there are livestock loitering around and people walking. It's crazy. And now I know why this road is so damn long. Okay, well, that sounds bad news for you. I'm sorry. I can't help it. With over half the distance covered and Shirdi just a couple of hours away, it did get a bit tempting to push on the accelerator. However, there are a few things to be kept in mind, especially when you're driving on expressways like these. First is the car should be in good condition because you're going to be on triple digit speeds for a long, long duration. You need to have it serviced. You need to have the suspension checked. You need to have the alignment and balancing checked, especially on long straightways. And of course, the tires. Tires are what connect you to the road. And when you have a long trip like this, you have to have them in the right shape. Right tire pressures, do not over inflate or under inflate. Keep the temperature in mind if you're going to travel these distances in summers where the temperatures here can get easily near 50 degrees Celsius. It does have an effect on tire pressures as well. So these are the things and the speed. Now the Samruddhi Mahama has a 120 kph speed limit. And yes, it is to be followed strictly because of some very clear reasons. It is not safe. Yes, the road is designed for much higher speeds, but that doesn't mean you do that because 120 is a figure that is easy to control at this scale and it also gets you enough average speed, you know. So you don't really sacrifice on driving time and you don't sacrifice on safety, which is absolutely crucial. While Jai couldn't push much on the new highway, I could enjoy a bit of that twin turbo V6 and try to make up time, but all in vain. Yes, it was all in vain for Somil, who was still far behind while I had shady boards all around me. And all he could argue was that he had a few nice driving roads around him. But just the sheer amount of energy that has been saved, the time that has been saved, I mean, it is just incredible. The final leg and this, like I said, is the final toll as well as we approach it. Now, Nagpur to Shirdi will cost you roughly 900 rupees and uh, 
if that feels steep know that you are saving a lot of energy and a lot of time and because it is so efficient as well you do make up a bit in terms of the fuel saving too there we go the final barricade and we are into shirdi again now it wasn't a race of course somil was always going to come much much later but uh, we'll soon find out exactly where he is but for now this has been an absolutely tremendous experience for someone who actually wants to do this this road pretty much takes care of you google maps estimate for nagpur to shirdi was roughly 8 hours but i could manage it with one fuel stop and a quick stop for snacks in well under 6 hours As for me, I was still a long way behind and chances of dinner were looking slim. Since I reached Shirdi hours before Somil, I had plenty of time to myself. Get some sightseeing done, check into the hotel, get changed, have a crack at the pool, got a bit of a workout in and even had time for dinner. and i still hadn't heard from somil and just as i was going to pass out thankfully 12 hours later his royal highness arrived looking not so royal finally you made it don't even get me started i'm exhausted Okay, I mean, okay, fine. Have a seat. Clearly, you're battered. Oh, you have no idea. While you've been sitting on your cruise control, I've been dodging a million lives. I've been testing the Q7 suspension to the limits, and I've had enough for the day. But wasn't that the whole point? You know, to see how better the Samruddhi Mahamarg is. You know, it just. I mean, look at me. I'm fresh. I went to the gym. I played some pool. <laughs> you know what? I've come to a conclusion. This is the last time I've driven on that old road, and the last time I've suggested a coin toss. While Somil is knocked out, here is a look at the numbers that tell you the full story. Well, clearly he's had his share of problems today. Me, on the other hand, I'm still fresh. I can pretty much do the drive back to Bombay as well. But that's the whole point, you know. The point was to show how much of a difference the Samruddhi Mahamarg has made and clearly it is night and day the difference in travel time the difference in energy levels efficiency and most importantly safety so yeah it definitely is a big plus to Maharashtra and even a big plus to India as well but of course if you haven't driven on the Mahamarg yet please do so and let us know down in the comments what you think about it and if you haven't already subscribe to the Autocar India channel and if you like this video give us a thumbs up as well